Tad um, is one of the writers in that group I admired the most. Um, Tad was able to take a very simple subject and make it absolutely glow because he understood it so well. He understood old people very well. He understood women very well. As far as I can see, in Tad's writing for television, I never heard a phony line in any of his stuff. He was so pure, you know? Now, Tad and I weren't close. We were not big friends or anything like that. We just, like, saw each other, and, you know, we traveled in different circles and so on, and uh, and he was quiet and sensitive, and I was loud and drunk and obstreperous. So, you know, I mean, it's, uh, it's not that we had that much... Uh, socially in common with each other, but I had really admired him immensely, and still do. I mean, I never, I don't know if he ever wrote anything like a book or anything like that. If he did, I would certainly like to read it, because Tad, Tad is, you know, he reminded me a lot, in a funny way, of uh, Truman Capote, and the, and the, this kind of Softness. When 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 Tad or True looked at you, uh, they're like like looking, not just at you, but right through your eyes into who you are. You know, like a little boy or something. See what I mean? You know how kids look at you, and they see more than you want them to see. <laughs> well, that's the way these guys were. You know, or I saw Tad not too long ago. Um, Del um, came to town, Del Mann came to town, and we all had uh, lunch in New York, and Tad came down from where he lives, wherever it is, and, and um, we had a very pleasant lunch. And he hasn't changed at all. He's still that kind of boyish guy with that big talent. <laughs>